Hey, Chandler Bolt here, and joining me today is uh, my good friend, Dane Maxwell. Uh, yes. Dane Maxwell started a company called The Foundation um, that I went, uh, I went through. Online education company helps you start a SaaS company um, or any company. Um, so I went through that program years ago. Dane and I actually lived together uh, at one point in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, and Dane's just an all-around awesome guy. He spoke at our Author Advantage Live this past year. Um, actually drove all night. Flight got canceled because of a hurricane. Drove all night. Um, to then, I think, got there less than an hour before your talk <laughs> and then gave one of the the crowd favorite talks. I mean, going through the feedback and just the people that have talked about the event since then uh, have just raved about that talk. Uh, mm. And that was before launching his uh, most recent book. So now he's also an author. Um, we're also doing some work with him in our Sell More Books program, uh, helping him sell more books, which he's already doing a great job of even before diving into a bunch of that stuff. Uh, but I'm just super excited to have Dane here. Um, Dane has been a long, a long time friend uh, and mentor of mine, uh, and I'm really excited about his book. So really in this podcast, uh, what we want to go through is what has he done to successfully launch his book, Start From Zero, and then how is he using that to grow his business? Uh, so that's what we'll be talking about. But Dane, really great to have you here. Hey, I, yeah, I'm speechless after all that. That, that was fun. I, you know, I, I knew I needed to come to the event. I knew I needed to drive all night. And it was life changing, life changing event for me. Your 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 crowd of people is very healing and uplifting to be around. It's a good crowd. That's awesome, man. That's great to hear. And I know they loved you. And it's so funny, you. I didn't even put two and two together, but you know, you obviously know my brother and brother's band. But like one of their most popular songs of all time is called "Drive All Night." <laughs> so it's just so funny how fitting that is. Uh, but take me back. So I know you've been working on this book, um, "Start from Zero, um, for a while now why a book? Like why after all these years, you've done so many things, I think it's 16 companies um, that, you've, that you've started. You've obviously run a bunch of different companies. You've done a bunch of stuff with music recently. Like why write a book? I know a lot of your audience is uh, t trends towards Christianity. Um, and I think um, I've, I've since, I had, to, I had to walk away from Christianity because there were just some things about it for me that were just so disheartening that I, I couldn't stand it. Um, and then when I found uh, an author who wrote a book called Integral Christianity, and I got to read that, I was just weeping as I realized, like, I could still love Jesus without some of the dogma uh, that would, of condemnation. And like, when I was like, oh, I was just so grateful for that. Um, and, uh, but in the context of what I'm going to share, I'll share it with, in the context of like a higher intelligence um, that I've been surrendering as best I can my life to and trying to animate how, how, the, how, how this divine higher intelligence would, would have me show up in the world. Um, and so like my choice has, is le has less agency in, in God, if you will, but uh, this, this is, it, it's, 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 it's whatever is man, male or female, I feel it as this divine sort of current that calls me forth that I then like serve through. And I've got to tell you that the purpose that I feel through that does make me tremble at, at the, at the size of it and or whatever it is having me to do. Cause it's very unknown, but it's like the Michael Singer book, the surrender experiment. He talked about how he surrendered his way into being the CEO of a publicly traded software healthcare company. Like he literally surrendered his way there. Like that's where he ended up. <laughs> that's like the of all the things to be CEO, <laughs> you know, CEO of public. So like surrendering this divine intelligence. So a friend of mine, um, Sonny Durante, um, we were pretty close at the time and he went to a numerologist in uh, Encinitas. And I really didn't know much about numerology uh, up until, you know, moving to Encinitas and getting all that woo woo kind of stuff. And uh, I would call it more subtle energetic stuff than woo stuff at this point. But so he plugs, he gives my date of birth because he wants to know like the context of our friendship. And she's just kind of offhandedly said, Is, uh, has he written a book? And he's like, no, no. He's like, it looks like he's going to write a book. And like Sonny told me this, I was like, okay, whatever. I'm going to write a book. It's fine. You know, a year goes by and a publisher contacts me and asks me, will you write a book? And like that, uh, yes. I said, yes. 
Yes, I will. And it wasn't an, it wasn't a hard yes. It was like this exhilaration of like, oh, all the gifts that I've acquired in business and the distinctions and the articulations and the way that I can encourage people and, and, dis, and dismantle worthlessness and build it like all these things that are going to come into the forefront of showing people that every person is worthy of having their own business if they choose it. And like, holy crap, and making entrepreneurship accessible to the people that it's inaccessible to. No idea, no money, no experience. That us, you can do it. Like, there's nothing stopping you, you know? And it's like, yes, this war cry, like, is going to go in a book. So um, that sort of divine intelligence, like, I, I even asked the guys, like, because I was so hot, a little haunted from the numerology, like, the thing. Is like, <laughs> I, so I was like, all right, you know, there's my opinions about things, and then there's just, like, what's actually happening. And this, this is what actually happened. So I, I was like, how did you, like, think to, like, like, cause it was just like a lowly employee at the company. It was just some random guy that proposed it to this company for me to write a book. So I asked him about it. You know, <laughs> it's like, hey, you know, that's, uh, um, how did the heck did this heck come to go? How did this go down? He's like, oh, I don't know. I just kind of got the idea one day that we need to do a book about entrepreneurship. And, you know, a lot of people ask about entrepreneurship. And I just thought, so I just, I went online and found you. I'm like, okay, you, 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 you got the idea one day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, like <laughs> you, you got it. Like, it wasn't get, like, <laughs> so and then if you think about the, the book the title the book is called start from zero and it's uh when i felt that like one of the things i did at your event that i loved that i could do to like i could do till i'm I could, I could i could be passed out almost going to sleep and helping someone with their book title like i just <laughs> yeah. I, I get so excited about helping mm -hmm. people with their book title and this, like, you know, one guy at your event, he's like, I got this book. It's about the modern day job crunch. It's about like, you know, the modern day job hunt. It's about, you know, like why it sucks and stuff. And here's my working title. And he says some title that's just terrible. And I said, stop, here's your title. The modern day job search, why it sucks and how to fix it. You know, and he's like, oh God, maybe he writes it down. He's like, thank you. And he walks <laughs> off, you know, the next person comes up and like, it's this woman who's writing a memoir about losing her daughter. And like, I ask her about why she wants to write the book and, she says to help other mothers. And I'm thinking this is bull, this bull crap. It's not why, but it's, you know, it's to the best of our ability. We, we don't realize how easy it is to be dishonest with ourselves. Full compassion. If she happens to be listening to this. That was my internal dialogue was like, there's no way this book's about helping other mothers. And I said, um, is this book actually about you grieving the loss of your daughter? You know, we're like, it's a pretty emotional moment. And she said, yeah, it is. And I said, how about the title? I will always miss you. And then boom, just hits her heart and tears and we hug in front of everyone. And she's got her title, which is honoring of her experience, which is she will always miss her daughter, which will be very, like, like this thing that I just love doing. I love titles because they're just like, something about them is just like, they're incredibly exciting to do. So I did that for like hours at one of your events, just up, up in a hallway. And, yeah, and, yeah. And, and we a lot out. of people raved about that. So let, let's <laughs> touch on that for a sec. So, okay. cause obviously we had you come speak at the event about copywriting and how do you, how to use words that sell Yeah, so yeah. for those who aren't familiar with copywriting in this case, it's not copywriting, like copyright your book it's copywriting, which is writing words that sell. Well, now, it, can I say something yeah. quick this? Yeah, so it's, sure. it's, it's, it's so easy for me to forget how powerful copywriting it is. Uh, and it's so significant that with proper copy, you can, build potentially between a billion dollar to a million dollar to a six figure business with just words. Um, just words can do it. Like, and I, if, like uh, I did a podcast interview with one of our foundation graduates, Dave Cristello, who owns Jetpack Workflow. It's a software as a service company. Um, and um, what he said, what do you want to title our podcast? I said, I want to use the one sentence accounts can use to triple their business. The one sentence an accountant can use to triple their business. And like, I was just, I just got done reading this book, the 16 word sales letter. This thing's fire, dude, by the way, this is, this is, this is awesome. gold. This is gold. And the 16 it's, it's, word sales letter. Yeah. Look how cheesy it's got. It's just cheesy as fuck. I, 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 I almost didn't buy it because the title looks garbage, but I was like, I, you know what? I'll bite. I want to know what the 16 word sales letter is. Cause he got me, he got me with the copy. And then he pulled me in and I was like, oh my God, with copywriting. All you got to do is define one belief and answer 10 questions and you have your copy just to find one belief in 10 questions. I'm like, this guy, he's like, he's an Agora. 
you know, Lagor is huge. So anyway, I just got done reading this and I was like primed. And so he's like, so what do you want your interview with the accountants to be on? It's like, oh, the one sentence that will triple the business for accountants. <laughs> Cause I was fresh on this. If I wasn't fresh on that, I'd come up with something that'd probably be all right. But that's how important, that's, that's how important copy is. Like it can literally make such a dramatic impact if you can get in the right frame of mind. And you can do that by reading and priming those right books. A hundred percent. And I'll, I'll, I remember you stressing the importance of that years ago when I was in the foundation. And oh, good, yeah. I remember, I mean, I know I've told you about this, but I remember handwriting copy for an yes. hour a day. This is actually why I lived while we lived together, while I lived your house in Des Moines. Uh, and it was, you know, for an hour a day for three months. And, and I would say like that you forget, just like you said, you forget that it's a skill that, that is yeah. extremely powerful. And so many things that have come from fast growth, growth for self-publishing school have come from the ability to write copy. So um, for those, for those that don't know much about copy, and I know this is like a big question. So, and we could do a whole separate interview about this, but like for those who don't know about copywriting, like how can they use that skill set? Um, to come up with an awesome title, especially for their book, or maybe what were some, kind of some of the fundamentals? Because I know you did workshops in the set, uh, in in the hallways with like anyone after your session who wanted help. Yeah, it was, so, it was what, so fun. I could do that. What for were the commonalities, and like how, how would you kind of teach the framework that you were saying about um, coming up with titles so easily? A lot of the title is about finding the the energetic space for the permission for that gold to shine through, because the title is within the book. The title is within the person. Oh, is it, what greatness is within you? <laughs> you know, the, t- the title is literally like, like within the person. And so like, if I listen and then I find, I, we just kind of give permission for the space to come up. Cause like one of the women, she was like, her book was like, this is really stupid title. It was like a new life again, you know, memoir of recovering from abuse or something like this. And I, and like, I listened to her story and through listening to her story, I was like, oh, you were abused often? He said, yeah. I said, oh, okay. Your title is, so he hit you again. That's the title. So he hit you again, threw himself on you, and tried to mold you into his image. Girl, fuck that. And that, and she, like, I, I don't know if she's in him. She loved it, and people loved it, and, like, it, it's got that, like, poof. but to find that, the, the title wants to be unique and in order for it to be unique, it needs to come from within you and it needs to be an honest reflection of your experience. So I will always miss you was what I was feeling from the woman. The modern day job search is exactly what he told me. He's like, Hey, I've got a book about a modern day job search. It's da, 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 da. Here's my title. I was like, Oh no. You know? And then the other, it, it, so the title needs to be really unique and it needs to come from within. And you can, you can find those words. If you give permission for that right thing, but what I would say is if we are invested that our, and this is pretty common, um, if we are invested with our book title being successful and that we have some, we have some way believe that our well being depends on the success of the book, which I've, which I've slipped into many times with my book, then that can actually totally create a state of survival. And then it can shut off a lot of creativity because you're like, this book is my livelihood. My well being depends on this versus the book just being a beautiful expression in the world and it's not identified with you that is an amazing place to get to and that's not something that you just make a decision on you've got to find the unconscious links and sit with those and dissolve them and etc but if you have like this this like unconscious belief this book has to work or da, 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 this, this is my chance for significance this is my chance for worth this is my chance to be understood and seen if you got any of that going on you're in deep, deep trouble because your body, you, you won't be able to be creative at all. So like get hire a therapist, like a straight up normal business, like a, like a therapist for business. And like, I get such good ROI bringing my business issues to th- like, I don't trust hiring people, bring that to a therapist or like, you know, Oh, I'm, I'm super identified. It's no shame. I'm super identified with this book. I think this book means that I'm worthy or not. You bring that issue clearly to a therapist and you start on doing that. You'll do your best work because one of the best books I ever read, by the way, I put into a visual piece of art back there on my wall. It's called The Great Work of Your Life. It's a very niche book, but that guy poured his heart and soul into a book probably for 10 years and 10 years and 200 pages, The Great Work of Your Life. Holy crap, like just in tears reading it. You read about how Gandhi, like, like in, and you read the entertaining story about Gandhi. You read about Beethoven and you read about Marion, uh, the woman who established the female vote and like 
this painter Camille Corot, and you learn about all these guys from um, from that book. And uh, dang, I totally lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. So the three, the four steps to the great work of your life are to look to your path, right? The titles inside of the titles inside of you. Do it full out. Let the book slay you. Let it slay you. Let it just cripple you. And then use your fingers to type. And then when you let go of the fruits, that's step three. And then give it over to God is step four. So now, but like if you're not let, if you're not going all out, and then you try to give it over to God when you're not even you're not even all in yourself, it's it's a, it's not, it's not a reciprocal relationship. So when you talk about let grow the fruits, what I have written down. Clinging to outcomes hinders your performance. So, yeah, try not to do that. Short, long <laughs> <laughs> and I love I love that you were saying, you know, how uh, you know the guy at the event was explaining his book and then said his title. Yes. That's what we talk a lot about. Is your title is in the 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 ninety to one hundred and twenty second explanation of your book, not the fancy title where you're trying to be clever. Right. Yeah. And so I will often say record you explaining the book to someone and the title's right there. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, so I love that you did that on stage um, and, and with that book. So um, walk me through and we'll talk. I want to I want to like a little bit more on titles and then let's go into your book, how you're launching it, how you're using it to grow your business some innovative things you're doing on the launch, stuff like that. But specific to titles, any other tips for people coming up with a good uh, title? Because and, and so I'd, actually two things. I'd love to hear how do you come up with a title for your book? And then secondly, for people who are like, oh man, like you're just spitting out these cr crazy good titles, but I don't have that skill, like any, any framework that I could use or like something I could use to kind of get there. Five grand, I'll give you a title. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't do that, please. I I'm not sure that I could open a slippery slope. Um, well, I mean, depending on the context of your event or whatever, if I like, I'll, I'll do it again, you know, whatever, but um so framework of title, listen to Chandler. Chandler probably knows how to do that really good. You probably got a good framework. For me, what I would say is like, I really like, if you struggle with outsourcing, for example, and you need approaches to like how to hire people, my approach wouldn't be to teach you how to outsource. My approach would be able to teach you how to resolve real deeply in your core that you deserve a great life, one, and that you deserve to do only the things that you enjoy. And if you get truly centered right there, which ain't no easy task, even for me, just great life and then doing only the things that you enjoy, you will as an automatic byproduct start outsourcing. You won't need to know like tactics, like how to make it like. So in terms of title, that same approach of like going to the underlying energetic is I would say, look for the deepest parts of you that don't yet feel permission to be seen and allow yourself to be witnessed by the world. And if you give yourself that permission, then stand in that title that, that comes through that. That's what I would say. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Now switching gears a little bit, uh, walk me through like, what have, what have you done? Cause you're, you know, at the time of recording this interview, you're, you're coming straight off of uh, the launch of the book, which is amazing. I saw it hit number one on the Amazon bestseller charts in big categories. <laughs> With, yeah. with big books, um, which yeah. was awesome to see. Ab above, how, about, above Hal Elrod there for, yes. for a hot minute, for a hot minute. <laughs> <laughs> which obviously Hal spoke at the event as well. And, yeah. um, a, a good and I used this yesterday. strategy to, I used his strategy to do it. He said, so get, on a lot of, get, on a lot of, get on a lot of podcasts. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot more money than time now. If I didn't have the money, then I would have done it. But I just used the company um, to like book me on. And he's like, he had like a 24 podcast package. He could get me on 24 podcasts. And I was like, can you double that to 48? He's mm -hmm. like, Oh, no one's ever really asked for that before. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. you got on 48 podcasts at least, at least and yeah. more coming. I just booked another agency to yeah. do more now after, mm -hmm. after it's launched. Cause mm -hmm. I got to give a lot of credit to a guy by the name of George Bryant. Um, have you talked to him or met him ever? You'll never forget him if you get the chance to sit with him for an hour. He gave me an hour of his time on how to launch my book. He launched a, he's got like 70 plus bestseller book launches or whatever. The high level thing of that, read your entire book out loud on a video course, drip it out 30 days before your book release, 
and offer people to read an excerpt at the end of every video. And then the excerpt offer people to buy the book. It's, it's so cool. So like I hired um, a really great videographer and I got a suit and everything. Cause like it's new energy for me. And like, I want to like, I'm exploring new, new areas of expression, you know? And I got there and I just, and I stood for, I mean, it was eight freaking hours on my feet to do the video course, but that thing is done. It's high quality. Like if you want this such high quality and um, the whole book is available for people to get for free in video form. And that's so nice because that allows me to be even a little bit cockier slash confident in selling it. Cause I'm like, dude, you get the book free in video form if you want, or you can buy it and have it as a keepsake on your nightstand. Your choice is yours. You could do both. You could buy the book and, and read it while I'm reading it on video. Mm, like, right. But that's the high level of George Bryant. So the, I actually have a, I did a lucid chart. I'll do a screen share and I'll do it. I did a lucid chart for the, the launch of the book. I can show you. Um, and then there's one strategy that I'm doing to launch the book that I don't think any other author is doing that I am a little, I, I'm a little hesitant to share at this point, but I, I'd be more, I could, I could share it with your group maybe like three months down the line once it's vetted mm -hmm. and stuff. And the, um, but I'll, I'll share it with your group first when I, cool. when I'm ready. Um, but the high level of the, the, the thing was, um, book and video form, each chapter is a video, each video leads to an excerpt excerpt leads to the book. Those nice. videos, those now videos go out to everyone who's in a niche market on Facebook. They watch 90% of the, they watch, if they watch 25, 40, 50, 60, 70% of the video, then um, give them an offer to get the excerpt as like a retargeting video. Um, it, it would, it would really help to hire a, a digital marketer to help you with this stuff. Um, and so then that, that's that. And then I went on um, 48 some podcasts and um, and that was like, I, I don't really like how that happened because like they would send me out with a media kit and I was in another one of those, like, I feel like another one of those dunces, like trying to go on a podcast or promote a book. I was like, I'm in a sea of like a hundred other greedy to a thousand other greedy authors trying to get on a podcast to sell their book. It's like, I hate this feeling, but I just, I tolerated it to do it. And, then, <laughs> and I, and I like, and I, when I got on the podcast, I just like cranked as hard as I could to make sure like I, mm -hmm. that I felt like I really just like showing that I deserve to be there kind of thing. And you um, did 48 podcast interviews in what time period? I mean, I don't, I mean, if you did two a day, for 20 days you'd have 40 done yeah not hard but for you like was that was this over a week over a month like what did that kind of schedule look like did you try to get them all to release during your launch well, week for the book or what did that look so like so let me share my screen i'll go to my calendar and look at my month view because i can't even i couldn't even tell you so um in the month of march you can see like um uh, two podcasts on that Monday, one podcast on a Tuesday. Um, I'd have anywhere between one and three or four podcasts a day. Um, I, I had them start this process 90 days before the book came out. So like, kind of around like 90 days, but like it would get kind of hot some of these days. Like some, there's one day I had five podcasts in a day, you know, and that was actually fun. Like that, that's my, that's my zone is just talking. So, um, that calendar just like confused me. So sorry if you guys didn't get me back. Yeah, that's, so a lot of podcasts, I love the video companion course. I mean, it's super smart because it's like, you get the two, the two prong benefits, right? This helps pre-sell books uh, and it helps continue to sell books, but then also it helps turn readers into subscribers. So there's kind of this virtuous cycle of life that is people buy the book and then end up checking out the videos or people check out the videos and then end up buying the book and then they keep using both resources to achieve personal business goals sure of selling books of growing your business of things like that but then also the the reader goals which is that they actually use what they learn in the book uh, and they implement it so there's kind of like i love when i see people i'm about to interview um, pat flynn and he does these companion courses uh for each each of his books, you know, and I think that's just such a great way. It's so synergistic to help the reader get results from the book to turn readers into subscribers and then to sell more books kind of across the board. So anything else that you did either yeah. that's, that's yeah, yeah, unique yeah, yeah. that you're like, Hey, this worked really well. Or you mentioned learning the podcast thing from 
Uh, how Elrod, anything else from Author Advantage Live? I know you were in a bunch of sessions. Anything else you learned from there that you implemented or that's worked well? Well, I've got a lot of cool stuff going to happen from the book. Um, the, I, um, the book is designed as like, I wrote it as like a spiritual gift. Like my intention was as a gift. So like we're going to buy a bunch and like donate them to libraries and like, you know, and potentially like have like free groups where people come and read this book to learn how to start businesses from scratch. Like it's, it's, I want it to be like a Hallmark book, like tattered on the side of curbs. Like people just like, I, you know, I don't know exactly like on the side of curbs, but you know what I mean? Like just everywhere. And like, as a gift, like it's, it's, um, that's the intention. So, um, I wanted to say that like, so do you want to, like, when you're thinking about promoting your book, the, the, it's, it's, it's a terrible context to get caught in because if you can come from the place of how to add value to people, um, by introducing your book, that subtle change will make quite a big difference because, um, if we break apart, like, so I'm trying to get on Pat Flynn's podcast again, and I think I'll get there. Um, but it's, I've, I've emailed him two or three times. Um, and let me, uh, I'll let me, I'll show you the emails I sent. I'll also show you, I'll also show you an email I sent that I thought was probably one of the better ones. Um, and I'll show you what my podcast approach is going to be. So Ryan Robinson, um, is, uh, pretty, uh, pretty, like if you Google make money online, Ryan Robinson is on um, number one. So um, I sent Ryan this email. Um, I'm a fan in the subject line. And then I said, I'm a fan of how hard you work and what you're up to, Ryan. Watched you for two years now. I've got a book coming out that will help a tremendous amount of people safely enter the world of entrepreneurship cover attached. I've already had 15 millionaires graduate my programs. Track record is there. Also own a multi-million SaaS. Here's why I'm writing. I wanted to see if you thought it'd be a good, if I'd be a good fit for your podcast. I've had top episodes with Pat Flynn, Mixergy, and EO Fire, but we have yet to meet. And second, I was wondering about a random idea. If I could pay you to read and review the book honestly on your blog. Book released March 31st, 2020. And then here's the title. And then he replies back. Um, so I sent this on D December 4th, 1137. He, he replied within a half an hour. He said, hey, Dane, thanks for the kind words and for reaching out. You actually caught me on a record breaking, a, rec a recording break from my podcast, pausing while I reposition the show early next year. But I'm thinking we could probably do an interview once I get the new approach down. Would it be cool if we stayed in touch regarding that? Because I'm not trying to push my agenda onto Ryan. I'm in relationship with him first, add value first. Is this a fit first? I'm not like a chicken with my head cut off like a you know artist with cds like here are my cd here's my cd here's my cd here's my cd and i'm not an author being like here's my book here's my book please read my book please validate me please validate but i'm not doing that uh, i get I, I have those thoughts but i resolve not to do it it's about uh, it's about what i'm showing you here so i said for the book i'd be happy to give it a read for free and let you know my thoughts and considering it in my business books 2020 update so he's gonna if he wants to feature my book there um last question for you I'm actually doing a guide on effective outreach emails right now. And your email is really strong. Would you mind if I use this email as an anonymized in my upcoming post? I blur your name out and other identifying info. So he wanted, to, he wanted to use this as a template for reach out, which we'll break down in a second, but he wanted to anonymize it. So here's what I said. I said, um, uh, I said, dude, so beast, you know, I teach, um, you know, I teach that stuff, but honestly, then forget it myself when I'm writing these emails. Like I was just kind of doing unconscious competence. But then I said, um, maybe you don't have to anonymize, uh, or anonymize and I could get a backlink. So then he released it, um, showed it, and he has an article. Um, and we talked back and forth. And now he's got me. I've got a good old, art, good old link from Start From Zero on a really highly reputed blog. Oh, cool. And so. That's awesome. And this all happened from a cold email to someone I've never met. So now if we look at this, this is true. I feel like a fan of this guy, how hard he works. So he's saying I'm a fan of how hard you work and what you're up to. That's true. I've known him for two years. I've looked at him for two years. Now here's me. I've got a book coming out that will help a tremendous amount of people and then do blank, 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 whatever your thing is. 
cover attached. Then you say whatever your credibility is. You may not have the 15. I mean, this is pretty insane credibility. I kind of like, I'm like, I wonder like how this is even true for me as well. Sometimes like this is actually real. Like, but like you'll have some form of credibility you can say here. You know, like I learned how to leave abusive relationships. I know how to do that. I've left abusive relationships and I know like whatever your credibility is. And then you say, here's why I'm writing. I wanted to see if you thought I'd be a good fit for your show instead of, can I come on your show? Um, and then you'll say I've had, um, and you'll have any other, if you've had media appearances anywhere, any other credibility there. And you say that in second, I was wondering about a random idea. And if I could pay you to read and review the book, honestly, on your blog, because that was just something I was curious. I was like, Hey, would you be cool with this? And it can like, if you're really clear and simple with it, can you be cool with this? Now, when it comes to Pat Flynn, I'll show you what I've done with him. And I haven't got on his right back on his radar yet. So with Pat Flynn, um, Okay, here's the first email I sent Pat back on October 22nd. So I asked him on October 22nd and I said, hey Pat, I'm gonna be a father soon, how you been? I just wanted to say how much I appreciate you and everything you've done for me. A beautiful baby girl comes in November. I've been growing up, I guess you could say. This is because I, I'm a little insecure around him. I think maybe you might think I'm a little immature or I was immature back in the day. I don't know, this is all my own insecurity. I probably would, I'd do this a little differently now. But then I said, I'm writing because I got a book coming out next year and here's the image. And I said, and I wondered if you'd have me back on your podcast. I'm a little nervous asking because of the remit thing that ruined me. And for those listening, um, when I was 28 or 29, we, we, I, I blatantly plagiarized someone's work and he brutally attacked me online for it and it ruined my reputation among the remit crowd. And so it's actually why it's a chapter in my book. I actually, I actually publicly apologized to remit in my book um, on one of the skills it's, it's, um, there's seven skills I identify in the book. And one of them is to learn from losses, mistakes, and low integrity moments. Cause I had a low integrity moment. So I literally show you how to do it. And I apologize to meet publicly. Anyway, I've learned a lot from it and it took a lot of healing to do, but I tell I tell them about how I speak about actually remit in the book and apologize. Cause I, cause like, I think he knows remit and it's in this, in this fear. I think that's what's relevant. And I wanted to contact you well in advance. And then I got this PS Anyway, you can tell I'm really trying and you can also tell like I'm desperate a little bit, you know, so this is a desperate email. So then, um, then, uh, Jesse replies on his behalf and he says, Hey, it's great to hear from you. Full disclosure. We're all, we're full on the core on the podcast all the way up to quarter two, 2020, um, blah, blah, blah. Um, which like Pat's told me this before. He's like, yeah, man, I'm full for like a year and then I'll give him an idea. He's like, that's good. Let's do that right now. So like, this is, this is like, this is negotiable. You know, it's usually negotiable. Like if you have a really, like it said, listen, man, our podcast is full for a year. If someone says, listen, our podcast is full for a year, you could say something like, well, listen, if you tell me what the number one hottest thing is with your audience right now, we can do a podcast episode on that, on that, on that topic. And then lightly reference the book at the end. Um, let me, the top, tell me the topic. I'll tell you if I can help with it. And then like, I did that. And I was like, what's the biggest problem? He said, my audience is a huge problem with taking action. I was like, I've got an excellent, I got actually got an excellent concept that we will take action. I got on a show that week. Um, so that's always negotiable. Um, so then I just reply back. I follow up. Um, I speak with Pat, da, 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 I'll touch soon. It's nothing. So nothing October 23rd. So now I take another swing at bat with Pat this week. And I send um, six days ago. You can tell I'm way more confident. You can tell I'm way less needy. You can tell like I've, like I've got my, some of my mojo back. Subject line, number one bestseller, man. And I say, hey, uh, hey, bro, want to have a reunion? Kind of playful. I think I could deliver your new number one podcast show. Would love to catch up. And then I have a link to the image. And now um, Jess replies back again. Hey, I've got you on the list to discuss with Pat on, your one -on, on our one-on-one -on -one next week. But if Pat gets back to you before I do, let me know. Very different reply. And then I say, that's great. I really want to get on Pat's show. So I said... I can even build a business live on that podcast for the episode. That'd be dope, right? Like, well, I mean, what would be like irresistible? Because the start from zero process in the book, within an hour, you can have an idea. You can have the, you can have the sales letter written out. Like within one hour, you can have a business if you follow the start from zero process. So that's what I'm doing now. So with, with the first iteration of the 48 shows, I was one of those dunces with his media kit contacting the podcast to get to sell my book. I was like, ah, that's fine. I just don't like this but I tolerated it. Now with what I'm doing here, my form of reach out, 
uh, now I'm now I'm using and I'm trying a different um, reach out person. I love the first person I used. Um, they were amazing. Um, and the second person, I'm just I'm always like I, I, I my first vocal coach was awesome. I still had four vocal coaches, you know, like the, I like I like to get the variety. So with um, Ryan, he's going to be getting me shows. Um, and like I'm wanting to go. There's nothing much to show you. because I can just tell you um, I'm wanting to go like on like I want to talk to homeschool moms about how to like create a curriculum for their kids to like practice creating business for an hour, one day a week and like come up with a new idea every week and how they'd sell it and run it, et cetera. So a curriculum for homeschool moms to run this in their thing. And like, so there's, there's this deep intention of service behind the book was really, really want to serve. So I'm not necessarily shooting. I mean, bestseller is cool, but like what I'm really after is a combination of like, I'd love to be recognized as a bestseller because the book has so little of my ego in it and so much of my heart. Like when I look at the book, it's very devoid of ego because the way I got the title was sitting still and like kind of listening really deeply. And then when I was like in this kind of still state of awareness, I heard the words start from zero. I heard them and they were up here towards on the right side of my over here. I heard it. And I was like, yes, energetically yes and i was like Poof. and then I, I was like i will steward this idea into reality and that's how i had it and that was um you know i don't know it was october i had start from zero and here we are during the midst of the coronavirus when many people are being reduced to zero and this book start from zero comes out that's not something that my ego could ever take credit for or my intellect could take credit for that was surrendering to the divine intelligence that i hear and that's guiding me um now you want to use some discernment because like you, there could be some titles that you think you're hearing from divine intelligence that may never get noticed. Um, but that's kind of the, the brunt of it. So now with this next reach out, instead of being a guy promoting a book uh, on this next podcast run, um, cause like my book launched today and I'm getting going another podcast run. Like it's not like, right. I'm done yeah, oh, for sure. Which is exactly what Hal talked about. Yeah. This is amazing, man. Hey, we're in the home stretch. I want to ask yeah. one, maybe two final questions. Yeah, yeah. And and awesome. Thank you so much for for doing the bro well, breakdown of the outreach templates. Just one second. Um, okay. And for anyone listening on the podcast, um, go to the Self Publishing School YouTube channel. If you're like, wow, I am so lost with what was just happening, um, go to the YouTube channel and you can actually see the video version uh, of that uh, and see the outreach templates and all that good stuff. But Dane, this is kind of my final question. Knowing what you know now, what would you say to former Dane? So pre-writing the book, Dane, and in this case, someone who's listened to this podcast and who's thinking, hey, I'm thinking about doing my first book. What advice would you have for them knowing what you know now? Let it slay you. Let it slay you. Remove your ego. Serve like with as many cells that you can. Um, and make a lot of noise about it. Get on a lot of podcasts. <laughs> uh, well, dude, like I, like I was on a Facebook group today and like, you're not really supposed mm -hmm. to promote in Facebook groups, but like I did it. Like I was like, Hey, I'm not sure if this is appropriate or this is a considered promotion, but Hey, I just had this book come out. It, it got this ranking um, and, uh, if anybody wants an excerpt for free, I can give an excerpt and I tag the admin. If you want to delete this post, that's fine. And it's blowing up. People are like, give me the excerpt, give me the excerpt. And I got like mm -hmm. free promotion in a group. Like, mm -hmm. so when I say like make a lot of noise, like I really believe in the book. It's like mm -hmm. my, my, my phrase of the book is like, this book is so relevant now because this book will help you find a virtual work at home idea very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so like, that's a new spin for anyway, sure. like that, but that comes from, Ideally, like looking where you don't believe yourself, holding that as an experience, finding where you do, et cetera. So not just get on a lot of podcasts. It's making right. a lot of noise. We've got ads going. We've got all this retargeting going. We've got, right. I'm going to do a whole blog post right up to on every little thing that we did to promote it. Cause there are quite a, there's a, there's a bunch of like, ran, like I'm going to be on the cover of some magazine through some random happenstance thing. And I'm, and I got on Nathan Lacka's magazine and all oh, this cool. weird stuff happened because yeah. the intention was how can we make a lot of noise? That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. And speaking of Nathan, like, uh, did you see him? Did you see his session out with Advantage Life? Yeah. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that guy is unreal. I love that. We have we have battles in Catan whenever he comes to LA. <laughs> he loves that game. But just as a strategy 
man, all the stuff he did to launch that book is, is, is unreal. Um, well, hey, let's do this, uh, Dane. Uh, this, this has been amazing, man. Uh, thank you for sharing all the stuff around titles, around podcasts, around outreach stuff, just everything that you've shared here. Uh, I'm super excited for your book launch. I've already got my copy. Um, oh, where can yeah. people go to find uh, the book, uh, to buy the book, to support the book launch, all that good stuff? Thank you for anyone who does. Startfromzero.com is a great place to go. You can see how I'm, you can see how I'm going to run the book, how I'm going to run the funnel, everything to study it, learn it. And then also if you want an excerpt, startfromzero.com forward slash five, F-I-V-E. You get the, you get the five, yeah, you get the five question process. And it's start from zero, Z-E-R-O or the number zero? Uh, spelled out. All right, spelled out. Startfromzero.com, check it out. Uh, grab the book and check out the companion course. Uh, and Dane, hey, thanks so much uh, for coming on the show. This has been awesome. Love watching and learning and excited to keep working together on this book. Yeah, and I just want to say I, I hope everybody has a good life. I want you every, everybody to have a good life. So make sure you keep that in mind. Success is not the hallmark. Money's not the hallmark. Being happy is the goal. And you can do that right now. So don't awesome. forget that. Awesome. Thank yep. you, Dane.